Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be doing makeup on someone else. This is my friend Monica. She doesn't normally wear makeup, so I asked her what kind of look she wanted me to do, and this is the response Frank, I got. I want my eyebrows done. Like, I want like, bam. I want them to look like this. Like, I want them to be popping. I want, you know how you see them, how they like dark out here, and then they have like the little, I want that, though. I want them to be like full, and then you want eyeliner. I want to be contoured. I want my face to be cut. I want to cut somebody when I walk out of your house today. I want to be like this and be like, ow. <laughs> Okay, so to start off, I'm using the Urban Decay Quick Fix Priming Spray. This has coconut water. It's going to help hydrate the skin and prep the skin for foundation. Next, I'm using the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer. This is going to help smooth out the skin, fill in any pores, and it's really just going to create a nice even canvas for the foundation. I find that the best way to apply this is to kind of tap it into the skin and then smooth it out. That way it helps fill in the pores and then also helps smooth out the skin if you have any texture. Moving on to the eyes, I'm going to use the Urban Decay Primer Potion to prep the eyes. And I'm using my fingers to apply this, but definitely if you're doing makeup on a client, use a brush. Um, I like to use my fingers because I feel like it melts the product in a lot better. But definitely um, make sure you wash your hands and ask the client if it's okay to use your fingers. For eyeshadow, I use the Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia. And I'm going to use the color Warm Taupe. And I'm using this Harry Potter blending brush. These don't have any numbers or specific names. This is just the blending brush that was in the collection. And I'm going to use this brush to blend the color throughout her crease and I'm probably going to go over it a few times to build up the intensity that I am looking for. I want this color to be blurred out but still be visible when I blend the other colors on top. The other palette that I use is the Master Palette by Mario which is also by Anastasia and I'm using the color Isabel. This is like an orangey tone and I'm using a Sigma E25 brush. This brush helps me focus it right onto the crease and not bring it up onto the other color that I just placed. You want to focus that right underneath, not bring it up too high, and then blur it out if it looks a little too harsh. So I go over that a few times to get the intensity that I want. And then to show you guys a little bit better, again, I'm focusing it right onto the crease, trying not to bring it up too high. And then I'm using the Wet n Wild blending brush. This also doesn't have a number or a name. It's just the Wet n Wild blending brush to blur it out a little bit so it doesn't look too harsh. Back to the master palette, I'm using the color 5th Ave and I'm using a Harry Potter shading brush. This is a really small shading brush and I'm using this to put right onto her lid. As you can see, I am packing on the color but it wasn't intense enough for me so I'm going in with some MAC Fix Plus. I'm spraying that on my brush and going over again with the same color and you can see it's a lot more pigmented now when it's wet so that's just a little trick to make your eyeshadow stand out a little bit more if you're not happy with the way they're coming out. Using the same master palette, I'm using the color Violeta, which is funny because that means purple, but this is a brown. But anyways, I'm using the same E25 brush and I'm focusing the color on the outer corners. So this is going to help smoke out the look and just kind of complete everything. Gives the eyeshadow some dimension. And then I'm using the same Wet n Wild blending brush to blend it all together. Moving on to the brows, I'm using the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the color Medium Brown. And I like to comb the hairs all the way up because this really shows you where you need to fill in and what needs to be filled in. So I like to start in the front of the brow but not the very front. And I like to start drawing that bottom line to create the shape and then go in and start filling in the tail and then slowly bring the color in. I actually learned this technique from a Boston makeup artist. I'm going to link her down below. She has an Instagram and a Facebook page. I attended one of her makeup classes and I thought this technique was so easy to understand and it works so good. So there she goes. And then again, just start from the front but not the very front and then create that line and then start filling in the tail first and then slowly bring the color in. If it looks too harsh, you can just use this bully to blend out the color. I felt like this color was a little bit too dark for her, but remember in the beginning of the video, she said she wanted a bold brow, so here we go. Then I went in with the Anastasia Brow Powder. This is in the color Soft Brown, and I just went over the brow pencil just to help 
kind of keep it in place because sometimes I feel like the brow pencil can wear off during the day and I wanted her makeup to stay on as long as possible. For foundation, we're using the Stila Illuminating Liquid Foundation and I'm using a damp beauty blender to apply this. I don't remember what color this is because this is actually Monica's foundation and as I was applying it, I noticed that the shade was probably a shade or two too dark. So you'll see me bring it down all the way down her neck and you always want to do this with any foundation because you want to make sure you look even, you want your neck to match your face. So as you can see, I'm just blending it, making sure I get it all the way down her neck. For concealer, I'm using the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. This is one of my favorites and I'm using the color Light Neutral. I'm going to apply this underneath her eyes and I don't know why oh, we were smelling it because it smells good and then we're gonna apply in her highlight areas which is on her forehead along the bridge of her nose and on her chin and I'm using the same damp beauty blender to blend this out using a light concealer a few shades lighter than your regular skin tone will help brighten up those areas and in this case it also helped kind of fix that foundation problem that it looked a little too dark so now everything looks a little more even and you can't really tell that the foundation was too dark and now to set the concealer I'm using my RCMA no color powder and I'm using the same damp beauty blender and I'm applying the powder heavily on all the areas that I apply the concealer a lot of people always ask me what this does this helps keep your concealer in place it will not budge it will last longer it won't crease and it's just an awesome technique. I always do it even if I don't have time. Next, I use this powder, which was also Monica's. This is the Clinique Stay Matte Powder in the color Stay Golden. And I thought it was a little bit too dark, but I ended up just using a little bit to set the rest of her face. And I wanted to set that foundation that I applied on her neck. Next, to bronze up the face, I'm using Hoola Benefit Bronzer. And I'm also using a BH Cosmetics 125 brush. And I'm applying this contour or the bronzer pretty heavily and a little harsh along her cheekbones. Then I'm bringing it up all around her forehead. And then I'm also going to bring it along the bottom jawline. That's really going to help define the jawline and it's really going to make her look contoured like the way she said she wanted in the beginning of the video. So as you can see, I'm applying it a little harsh. You can kind of see the line of where I'm applying the bronzer. I'm going to go over this with a Wet n Wild powder brush. As you can see, I'm just blending it out and making it look a little more diffused so it doesn't look as harsh. You don't want to see any lines when you apply your contour. And then with the same powder brush, I'm just going to go ahead and dust off all that powder that I left baking on her face. Going back to the eyes, I'm going to use eyeliner. This is the Maybelline Eye Studio Gel Eyeliner. Gel eyeliner is my favorite way to apply a wing. And I'm using a Sigma E06 winged liner brush and I'm creating a really thin wing. And I am tugging ever so slightly on the outer corners of her eyes just so I can get a nice crisp straight line when I'm creating the wing. But you want to be really, really gentle when you're working around the eye. If you need to tug, you need to do it really softly. And of course, I was blocking off the whole thing, couldn't even show a close-up. So then I asked her if she could do her mascara, and we're using L'Oreal Voluminous Butterfly Mascara. And the only reason why I asked her to do it was because I was afraid to poke her in the eye with the wand or something. But she ended up applying mascara all over the place, and I didn't want her to mess up her foundation. She was just about to rub it against there when I told her no. So a trick to this is to use a spoolie and just kind of rub it off really slowly and it'll just come off and it won't mess up the foundation. Next I'm moving on to falsies. I'm using these Ardell Natural Demi Wispies and I'm using the Kiss Lash Adhesive which I've talked about before. It's my favorite lash glue. Lasts all day. It's the best. And I'm using the MAC Lash Applicators to apply this. And I try to go for something natural because Monica did mention that she's never worn lashes before so I didn't want to go with anything too heavy and these just came out really pretty and she was loving them. And I wanted to skip doing any lower lash eyeshadow so I just ended up applying some mascara to her bottom lashes and this time I did it myself to avoid any more mistakes. Um, but I hate doing this because I feel like I'm going to poke the person in the eye or something. Now that we're done with the eyes, I'm moving back to the face and I'm using this MAC blush palette in the color Melba. And I'm using this Real Techniques blush brush to apply it. 
So for highlight, I used this Jeffree Star Skin Frost in the color Ice Cold. And this also belonged to Monica. She was so excited to use it. And I'm using a Morphe M310 fan brush to apply it. But I didn't really like how the pigmentation was coming. It didn't look bright enough for me. So I went in with MAC Fix Plus again. I wet my brush with it and then went back into the highlight and reapplied. And as you can see, you can see it a lot more now. So again, the trick, wet your brush. And then to finish off the look, I'm moving on to this Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in the color Uptight. And I'm going to go ahead and line her lips with this. And then I'm also going to fill them in. And the reason I fill them in is because it helps keep your lipstick last longer. So if your lipstick fades, you still have that lip liner underneath. And then that just helps minimize the amount of times you'll need to reapply your lipstick. And then for lipstick, I'm using this Urban Decay Matte Lipstick in the color Carnal, which is pretty much the same color as the lip liner. And I'm using the Harry Potter Shader Brush to apply this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below. Like this video if you want to see more. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.